Hi, welcome to Exploring the Illusion of Free Will. My name is George Ortega, and today we're going to be talking about how free will is more of an erroneous deduction than an illusion. Okay, um, the idea is like we, we generally refer to free will as a myth or an illusion. But when you think about it, more fundamentally, it's not that, it's not that, let's say, that um, reality is deceiving us in a certain way. Like, for example, like we'll look out into a, a highway on a very hot day, and um, it'll seem like we're seeing um, water on the horizon. Okay, and naturally, when we drive up to whatever point, it disappears because it's, it's a mirage, it's an illusion. Okay, but this, this notion of free will is a bit different because, like, it's actually based on what we believe is happening or what we deduce is happening. It's actually what we deduce is a much better term, actually, than, than belief, uh, than believe. But, um, okay, let me, uh, let's see how to, how to describe this. Okay, we make a decision. Okay, um, that's, that's something that we become aware of. Our, our conscious mind makes a decision. Oh, wait a minute. Whoa, 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 whoa. I want to slow down. Um, you know, because I, I, I want to get into this. No, no, I was, I was going to like, you know, just redefine free will and, you know, go into why it's impossible and, you know, through causality and the unconscious as I do through uh, with most shows. But, you know, this is like the 41st episode. So um, for this one, I, um, I may go back to it, in, you know, after this, but um, yeah, I'm going to just go with, with explaining this because it's, this, this, um, this concept, I don't think it's, it's something that, um, that has even, well, I'm not sure about the philosophical literature on this topic. It, um, I, I would actually be surprised if, if, if people like Spinoza and Schopenhauer and, and you know, others haven't um, you know, basically made that same realization, uh, written about that same realization, that basically, you know, that free will is, is not really a, an illusion per se. It, it's, it's, a, it's a mistake. It's, it's like, you know, we're basically looking at the data upon which we're, you know, considering this question of human will and just like reaching an erroneous conclusion. All right, let me, let's, let me try to explain that um, a bit more clearly. Okay. Um, so we make a decision, we become aware of, um, of having made a decision. And I explained last show why that is, okay? So consciousness is only awareness. So we become aware of having made a decision. Now, the question that we're asking ourselves is, was that decision free of factors that we're not in control of? Okay, this is, this is not a question of illusion, of, of seeing something and, and believing it's something else. This is a question of deduction. We're asking ourselves, is our decision free of factors that we're not in control of? It's a completely cognitive question. It, you know, it's not, you know, like, again, there's, like, there's another illusion where you have two lines, horizontal lines. One has in-pointing arrows, the other one has out-pointing arrows at each end. And the one without pointing arrows seems longer. You know, that's an illusion. It's an optical illusion. But this matter of human will, you know, I may change the, the name of the show. <laughs> the, uh, the mistake of free will. Exploring the mistake of free will. But um, it's a mistaken conclusion. Think about it. All right. We're, and again, you have to realize, it's not the mistake of the conscious mind. You know, the conscious mind... Um, doesn't make decisions as we just, you know, reminded ourselves. It's just aware of stuff. Um, so, like, you know, you have our unconscious mind is kind of like, you know, concluding, all right, I did this. <laughs> yeah, the unconscious mind is concluding, I did, did this. I made this decision completely free of of the unconscious mind, of, 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 of all the data that's in the unconscious mind. Um, God, when you think about it that way, I think this is the first time that it really dawned on me in, in that way, because a lot of times, you know, um, I'll know the concepts for these shows, but I, I won't completely think them out until the show so this can happen. But, um, 
But yeah, it's like, you know, the conscious mind, the unconscious mind, I'm sorry, makes the mistaken deduction, conclusion, that it's making decisions, which, you know, later makes the conscious mind aware of, that are completely free of the information upon which it, the unconscious ma mind is making the decision. I gotta say this again. <laughs> All right, you have our un unconscious mind, which is the only part of our mind can, that can make a decision because that's where the processing of the, all decisions is, because that's where it has to be, because that's where all the information is, and our conscious mind isn't even aware of the unconscious mind. So the conscious mind asks itself, is, is, is this decision that I made free of all this stuff in, that, that comprises the unconscious? You know, all, is it free of all the memories? I mean, is it free of the genetics and all? Because that, that's a second um, mistake, I think, that our unconscious mind makes. And um, another interesting aside is like, you know, to the extent that we believe in free will, when we, if we were to make this mistake, you know, we make it, you know, attributing free will to ourselves, then it's like our fault, it's our mistake. You know, we, we'll blame ourselves and might feel, you know, wow, this is stupid or whatever. But to the extent we understand that it's the unconscious um, that's like making that decision, then, you know, we're not like, you know, we don't blame ourselves. It's, it's, the, it's the mistake of the unconscious, okay? <laughs> um, okay, so I want to I wanna stay with this because, um, because it's important, because like um, the matter of human will is a question of logic and science um, fundamentally. Um, it relies on um, perception of reality. For example, we have this principle in um, physics that applies to everything, that everything has a cause, that nothing that happens that is not caused. And, um, and that, that forms the, the foundation of, of, of everything. Of, of, of you know, of the planets moving through the um, the Milky Way galaxy, of, of the smallest atoms, you know, of of everything we do, everything we think, you know, everything that happens has a cause. So um, so let's say the unconscious, you know, which is trying to like figure out this decision of whether the human will is free or causal. Let's say it considers this this principle of causality. Okay. Um, there's only one conclusion, one rational conclusion. If everything has a cause, that means that every decision that the unconscious makes has a cause. And causes will always precede the effect. It's always cause and effect. It's never effect and cause. In other words, time never goes backwards. It, it's always going forward. And like, so we're going backward in time to, to, to see the um, causal chain. But that's, you know, the cause again will always precede the effect. So, um, so basically, you know, if our unconscious is going to like evaluate that situation, that um, that principle, and apply it to our decisions, it's going to correctly deduce that if every one of our decisions has a cause, and that has a cause, and that has a cause, and these causes are stretching back moment by moment to before we were born, before the planet was created, to um, stem, um, theoretically to the Big Bang you know, and uh, who knows what before, then that just, that's, a, that's a rational, logical deduction of the nature of human will as causal. You know, that's a rational conclusion telling us that we have a causal will. Um, so the unconscious, you know, would be using logic to, to reach that conclusion. Okay, so again, to re return to the theme, you know, free will is more of an erroneous deduction than an illusion. Um, an illusion is mainly like seeing something, perceiving something in a way that um, is not really the way it is. You know, again, like, you know, seeing water on a rock, or like, you know, um, actually, you know, it's interesting because... Um, Sometimes, I think I, I've done this on the show, and other um, writers do this, like, 
for example, um, I bring up the example of, of the flat earth as another illusion. Um, but even that, I think, you, you can kind of, if you, if you kind of like tease it out, you can kind of understand that um, the way we came to understand that our world is not flat is through a logical scientific process. You know, so in other words, like, we deduced that, that the world is, is not flat, and we deduced that the world is not motionless. You know, um, when it gets to like, yeah, well, we deduce, you know, like some people would believe that the earth is 6,000 years old, or the world, you know, the biblical um, 5,700 and something um, biblical account for it. But, you know, again, applying deduction to that, it's, that's not an illusion. That, well, that's more of a belief. But, but I guess what I'm trying to say is, yeah, there, there, there is a distinction between an illusion and a, and a deduction. I really, I, I think I should um, begin to address it more. I may change the, the name of the show. I really may. But, um, but when you understand that it's a deduction, when you understand your conclusion about the nature of human will as a deduction rather than simply seeing it as a myth or an illusion, then you understand how logic plays a part, how it's a logical process that we, be, that we come to, um, to apply to this question and reach our, our answer. And, um, okay, you know, we might as well ask the question, all right, fine, if this is like a deduction, um, how do people get it wrong? You know, um, for example, if two and two equals four, how, how are people, some people saying, well, two and two equals five? What, you know, what is, what are they, where is their mistake? Okay. Um, it's hard to say. Um, my guess is that, um, all right, our minds, our unconscious mind, is capable of um, analyzing data and making decisions. You know, it, it, it does that. Um, but, um, uh, I'm sorry, I'm losing my, my train of thought. Okay. Um, the unconscious mind basically... Um, makes decisions, but it's, um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a logical process. It's a completely, you know, a, um, it's not based, you know, the unconscious mind, in other words, isn't deciding upon um, human will based on something it's misperceiving, like, you know, water on horizon. It's deciding completely on logic and the evidence that science provides. Um, for example, with science, there is absolutely no evidence of anything happen, happening that hasn't been caused. Everything that we, you know, that we perceive and detect and measure in a lab anywhere is caused, has a cause. I mean, we may not always be able to detect, detect the exact cause, uh, especially at the quantum level where particles are so small and our limited technology doesn't allow for all the information. And even, you know, on a theoretical, theoretical level, um, measurement, you know, because, because of the inherent, inherent uncertainty um, that comes about with the Heisenberg uncertainty principle, um, we can't really, we can't really um, measure. I've got like 13 minutes to go on this stuff, and I'm, my brain. Let me tell you something. All right, I'm trying to think, and it's not coming. And I'm gonna like, I'm gonna take the next 12 minutes to explain. We've done this. We've done enough of this deductive stuff. But I'm gonna take the next like 12 minutes to explain why my brain feels so fried that you know I'm trying to like. I'm. I granted these are pretty complex thoughts. You know this this whole consideration isn't. So very simple. On, on a certain level, it's simple, but you know, it does require a um, good amount of, of, of brain work. But here's the thing, <laughs> okay? And, and like, you know, so I'm going from like, you know, working to like think it through to just like a, an easier way. This is like an example of hedonic um, principle. I'm choosing to kind of like take the show in a different direction because I predict that it will feel better to do so. And this is a perfect example of my decision 
being based on this prediction and who knows why I predicted, but like I'm hardwired to kind of like to act upon that, you know, that prediction of what is going to create greater pleasure, you know, less pain. So, all right. So, so, um, so here I am. It's like, it's like Monday, um, who knows, around three o'clock or so p.m. And um, so last night, you know, I, um, I was out in Southport and Westport and Easton, Connecticut with, with a friend, you know. Um, ordinarily, I'll take the, um, the bus from, you know, take a train into Stanford and the bus into White Plains. And like, but like we were having such a great time that like, you know, the last bus, then I would have to like take a bus from Porchester or whatever, but the last bus like, you know, would have left because this was Sunday, like at 610. So anyway, so the, the upshot is like, you know, I ended up going to um, 125th Street, you know, and then because it's a different line, different train line, line um, the, um, I don't know, whatever. But anyway, so the, the, the point of that is like, so I had a very full day yesterday. And um, so Saturday, I was in Manhattan for my Exploring the Illusion of Free Will meetup, um, which we have every month, and it just fell this, this Saturday. And so that was like good to, I, I get there like half an hour early and like, you know, so I was there for about three hours. And so what, before that, then on Friday, Friday, I taped three of these shows, three episodes here in the studio. Because, like, you know, I was running behind. I need some uh, new material. So that was like, you know, and this, you know, this stuff, I mean, it's kind of easy in a way, but you do have to prepare. You know, you got to kind of like, um, you know, get ready kind of like psychologically in a certain sense and all. But anyway, so that was like last Friday. Thursday, I, um, I used to do a happiness show here, revolutionary show, it, uh, you know, world's first television show about the thing that's most important to everyone. And that was like, um, so I did that from 2003 and 2006. But the, what I'm trying to say is like, I now run this meetup right here in White Plains called the White Plains Happiness Club. So we did that on, on Thursday, okay? And then Wednesday, Wednesday, I got home Wednesday night at, after 2 a.m. in the morning because every Wednesday on commercial time, um, my um, friend um, who wants to be known as the messenger and I um, co-host uh, his show called The Myth of Free Will in Manhattan on Manhattan um, Neighborhood Network Channel 56 at 11 p.m again, every Wednesday. And the cool thing about this, it's, it's a TV show, but it's a call-in show. And it generally goes out just to Manhattan, you know, like on, on the cable. But Manhattan Neighborhood Network will stream the show, the live show, through the internet to, uh, to the entire world. So anyway, that's what I was doing on Wednesday. And I went into the city, I think, um, much earlier that day. Um, so then what, what happened, like, then there was Tuesday. So yeah, I think you have to go back a whole week you know, so anyway, so my mind's fried. <laughs> so, so it would, it would rather it would rather explain to you why you know it's uh, it's kind of like losing its train of thought sometimes, whatever, than than go into the the harder work of trying to explain why free will is more of a deduction than an illusion. Okay, and again, it's like the hedonic um, pleasure principle, if you will, is is controlling this. Okay. Now, eight minutes left. Let's, let's go back. I like to think about um, how important this is, what, um, how cool this is. Let's think about how cool this is. Um, imagine, imagine a world where everybody understands that free will is a mistaken deduction, <laughs> misnomed an illusion or myth. I don't, maybe it's both. I don't know. So with these things, sometimes you have to really think them out. But um, so everybody let, and this could happen within like a year or two. I mean, like if if people began to get this over the next um, three, six months and people began to get how, how important it is. And what, like with this Occupy Revolution to 99 percent and creating a new world, this like, you know, this this time is ripe for an idea like this. This is a revolutionary idea for a revolutionary new world. So like, let's say in six months to a year, people really get how important this is to to our world, to their personal lives. They, um, they decide to act on it. So like within, you know, a year after that, within that year, we will have 
you know, there's, there's going to be a lot more TV shows on this, obviously, a lot of books, a lot of learning, a lot of, you know, talking and thinking about this. And so a year from that, we get this, you know, we were, and, and we've, we've worked it out, you know, we've worked to integrate it, not just to understand it, but to kind of like every time like somebody does something wrong, oh yeah, it's not their fault. Every time we do something wrong, oh yeah, it's not our fault. So with that kind of a world, that would be amazing. That would be so cool. That's kind of like a paradise on earth in a way. I mean, not granted, there's going to be other problems. I mean, and which hopefully this 99% revolution is going to address. But, uh, but just the, the idea of creating a world, I mean, it's going to be fun because we're going to mess up. <laughs> in other words, like, and I, I've begun to do this with my friends. The, my, the friend who, with whom I was with um, last night, I, I've begun to do this with her, and, and it works. It's like, you know, like, um, I will begin to blame her or someone else for, for something. And like, and I said, wait a minute. Or, 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 or the other person might say, wait a minute, like, well, because this is in this world, you know, you know, this decision wasn't up to you, right? And then, like, I mean, as it's been happening, yeah, in my life recently, it, it's kind of like, it's a humorous thing. It's kind of like you're trying to integrate an understanding and you're trying to kind of like bring it into normal conversation. Um, you know, you did something wrong. Now, you, again, you can't, all right, I got to explain this more clearly. With this, like somebody, you do something wrong and somebody's not going to say, hey, why did you do something wrong? How, why did you do this wrong? They'll say, why did the universe compel you to do something wrong? But, but let's say, let's say they don't. Well, actually, in this case, let's say they mess up. Because again, we're, we're in imagining a world where pretty much everybody understands, you know, a year from now, a year and a half from now, that, every, that free will is an illusion, de, um, mistaken deduction. So like this person me messes up and let's say, let's say they say that I did something wrong, right? Um, and I could say to them, well, wait a minute, you know, um, don't blame me. You know, it's like the universe's fault. Okay, and the, and the caveat there, of course, is like that doesn't give us license to just do whatever we want anyhow. But, um, but it's just like to the extent that, um, that we have that perspective, that we have that kind of um, grounding for the exploration of whatever it is that, you know, one of us may think is wrong, um, all of a sudden, you know, that person who, who blamed me for something and, 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 and me, it's like we're not like enemies or, or adversaries. We're kind of like, why did the universe, you know, create this, um, this, you know, this conflict with us? You know, it, it restores, you know, the, the mistaken deduction of free will pits people toward each other, you know, because we're actors, we're the actors and, you know. Um, whereas the, the understanding that our human will is causal and just has us see that we're all on the same side. Okay. Um, yeah, can, can I get a camera change? <laughs> Thanks. Um, all right, so we've got about like four minutes left, and I am tired. You probably hear it. <laughs> My brain is still... Uh, you know, frozen from all this thinking. But, you know, I'm not going to tape another three episodes for like another week. So this, this week should be a lot more pleasant. I'm going back up to Connecticut to see my friend after, you know, this evening. So that should be restful. All right. So um, what this is huge. Again, I, um, I've got to say this because if I don't say this, who's going to say it? Who, you know, because like basically there's, I mean, a lot of people get that free will is a mistaken deduction, but most people, very few of us, get how important this is. Um, in other words, some people will, will make the mistaken conclusion that, well, yeah, we know that um, free will, that we don't have a free will, that human will is causal, but it doesn't change anything. It doesn't matter. No, it does. It matters profoundly because, like, if we are basing every reaction to everything we and others do on a mistaken deduction on this belief this notion of free will then we are just like confusing reality it's really like the primal <laughs> i gotta do i did a show on causal will on friday and because i was describing this um free will notion as um 
as 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 an insanity, as an illness. That you're like basically um, to believe that you are free to choose whatever you want, regardless of things outside of your control. That's kind of like believing in something that's just not true. And when when you're shown that it's not true, and you continue to believe it, then that quote unquote illusion would turn into a delusion. <laughs> Like, I'm, I'm confusing it. Um, I'm confusing it, right? But basically, yeah, the idea is that um, to the extent that we um, get this second most fundamental fact of human existence right, we can create a much, much more pleasant world. And And for those of us who are, you know, who fear that by abandoning the belief in free will that, you know, civilization will collapse. It won't collapse because we're hardwired biologically. It's not our choice. It's not a free choice to seek pleasure and avoid pain and also to be moral. You know, this is, these are hardwired drives in us. They're imperatives. So, um, so we're not going to let ourselves get away with like thinking we can do whatever we want because we don't have a free will and we're not going to let others get away with thinking that but the way we treat each other and address each other and talk with each other and conduct you know our institutions and our entire world will be sane will be sane because really there's i mean like i mean you can make a distinction between whether a mistake, a logical mistake, is you can equate that with this insanity. But I think in this case you can. You, you can. All right, we're running out of time, and I'm gonna. I'll explore this in more detail. I'm sure on, on other shows. But um, I hope you're beginning to get this. Again, if you want to see the other episodes, there are 40 on the internet. Uh, causalconsciousness.com or Google exploring the illusion of free will. Okay, I hope you're having a great day, and I'll see you soon. <laughs>